Uh, next up, Matt Strawn, the chairman of the Iowa Republican Party, joining us now here on Top Line. Thank you. I hope you have nothing against uh, William Henry Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you what, uh, we're ready to talk presidential politics in Iowa, that's for sure. <laughs> no doubt. So, so uh, you've, had, uh, you've had a number of visitors out there, obviously, and uh, Newt Gingrich right. is going to be out on Monday. Uh, we, we just talked to Rick Santorum here. I think he's been there already 10 times. Uh, Pawlenty's been out there. But, but tell me, it's interesting, a lot of the like, names at the top of the list that you see uh, simply have not, not gone out there. I mean, we, we really haven't had a, much of a Sarah Palin presence, for instance. Uh, or Mitt Romney. Or Mitt Romney, for that matter. Well, you know, and that's one interesting narrative that uh, there's no question that the 2012 process has started much slower and much later than it did four years ago. You know, when you had John McCain, Mitt Romney, and even Rudy Giuliani trying to stake out ground in the early states. But when you look at the activity on the ground in Iowa compared to, say, South Carolina and New Hampshire, we've actually seen more visits uh, than the other kickoff states. So. You know, I think the slower start is, uh, I guess, speaks more to the, the general field and environment itself than anything in Iowa. Um, I know we had Haley well, Barber uh, last week. Uh, on Monday, we're going to see Newt's going to be back. Tim Pawlenty will be back. Congressman Paul. Uh, steady stream of visitors. Uh, so things are actually starting to pick up quite a bit over the last couple of weeks in Iowa. We've also seen speculation from Romney's camp and others that maybe you don't need Iowa. Maybe you can skip Iowa. What's your take on that? Can, can a Republican nominee uh, be successful, win the nomination, and then go on and win the presidency if they're not competitive in the Iowa caucuses? Well, I think there's two things there. The first is, uh, you know, in my conversations with any of the campaigns or potential campaigns, I have not received any indication that Iowa is not part of their strategy for participating in the primary process. Now, the degree to which they participate, that's up to the individual campaigns. But secondly, when you look at how dramatically Iowa has changed since 2008, you've got to put Iowa back in the general election electoral map. So I don't think you can become president by writing off Iowa in the general election. And if you don't campaign in our caucuses and ask our Republicans for support, it's going to be tough to motivate them to turn out in the general election if you are the nominee. So I think it'd be a very perilous strategy for somebody that ultimately wants to be successful and win our electoral votes in November of 2012. Okay, so help us uh, handicap the field. Who, who, who do you see right now in this initial early stage, as you're laughing, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, ha have a, has a, in terms of having a, a good chance of going in there uh, and doing well in Iowa? Who, who do you see early on has, is resonating the most? Well, I guess first I laugh because as the party leaders, we're neutral in the process, so uh, of course you, know, so you I'm are. not going to play I'm, any favorites, I'm, of course. Notice, but, notice but what that I, can I did say, ask but you what who I can you prefer. Sure. <laughs> Well, what I can say, looking back to last year, there's no question that uh, Newt Gingrich, Tim Pawlenty, and Rick Santorum were probably the most active on the ground in Iowa. Now you have two individuals in Mike Huckabee and Mitt Romney who, having run before, having familiarity with Iowa caucus goers, you know, they aren't, they aren't starting in the batter's box this go around like they were four years ago. Um, so, you know, they're going to take a little bit longer. Uh, but I think ultimately it's wide open in Iowa because we don't know uh, what the final field is going to look like. And one thing that Iowa Republicans have proven caucus after caucus, the successful candidates are the ones who come to the state, uh, that do that hand-to-hand -hand retail politicking in our, in our pizza ranches, in our coffee shops, in our farm co-ops. So that's the candidates that are going to be, those are the candidates that are going to be successful. And I need, to, I need to ask you in our last 30 seconds or so, you're the owner of, a, of sure. an arena football team, the Iowa Barnstormers. Is there any, <laughs> any campaigning at games? Anyone made contact and said, look, I want to I get in there and make sure that uh, I, have a, I have a presence at some of the best football around? I tell you what, I would think it would be a fantastic way to reach 10,000 Iowa Republicans or Iowans in, uh, nine times a year during the spring and summer. <laughs> so we like it. We like a little barnstorming at the, at the uh, Barnstormer games. Can it work? <laughs> we love it. Hey, All right. absolutely. Matt Strong. Matt Strawn, chairman of the Iowa Republican Party. And when are we going to have a date on those caucuses? Soon? Uh, I hope so. I hope, we, I hope we can stick to that February 6th date. But, you know, as Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina have made clear, we're going to do what we need to do to maintain our role. But I really hope we stick to those right. rules. And I've been pleased to see Chairman Priebus be very aggressive Great. in uh, sticking Excellent. up for the rules. Matt, Matt Strawn, chairman of the Iowa Republican Party. Twitter.com slash Rick Klein. Twitter.com slash John Carl. I'm going to be at those games. Oh, absolutely.